What's the word, y'all? I am Words Illa, aka Drew Skills, aka Ill Doing It Too, and this is the Words Illa podcast. Man, so it's been a whole year pretty much since I started this, right? Because today is my birthday. Well, when this comes out, it hopefully is still my birthday. I'm gonna try to get this stuff together, but uh, maybe the audio will be ready and then I'll have the video version ready in a couple of days or so. I'm working on it, trust me. I'll get it out to you guys though. Um, but man, thank you again for anybody joining who wants to come, uh, and hear anything I got to say really in general, right? So last year, uh, it was a lot that I did for this. How I want to start out this year is every time I start an episode, I just want to start it with a positive affirmation, so to speak. So let's say today I'm going to go with, it's my birthday, right? Let's go with, it's your birthday. You can cry if you want to. Okay, so that's sort of a statement, more or less, but let's go into that a little bit. Let's just say every day you should be finding ways to appreciate yourself, celebrate yourself, definitely on your birthday, right? But that should be something that you do every day, you know, celebrate yourself, wake up with a positive feeling of, you know what, I'm alive. You know what I mean? And I'm me. I could be nowhere else. I cannot do anything about the past. I cannot do anything about what's going to happen for the most part, for the day, right? But what I can do is set a positive attitude for the day and know that I'm gonna stand in how I feel and I'm not gonna sit and allow anybody to affect that feeling, right? And if I do, I'm gonna notice it and I'm gonna tweak it and say, you know what? I'm not going down that road. That's not me no more. And what I wanna do first after that, right, is uh, give a big shout out, big thank you um, to the to really to be Diz the Rockstar, my homie. Y'all go check him out on Super Obvious on YouTube. Go check him out, man. He's got a lot of content on wrestling, mostly wrestling, right? So if you're a wrestling fan, definitely get with him. He's got a lot of good stuff, man. But he also makes beats, man. He's been a, a producer for many years, many, many years. He also does like reviews on movies and stuff. But yeah, check him out, man. Again, that's Super Obvious on YouTube, right? So a big shout out to him because the first episode last year when I started this was on my birthday last year and um, I had been thinking about the idea about starting a podcast so then I was like man well you know what's the best way let's kind of do a test run I'll call my good friend my homie my brother right and we just kind of kicked the shit man you know we kind of just talked about uh, a lot of different things man you know what I'm saying just a myriad of different things so a big thank you to him a big thank you to my homie Darian DBL Honest D he's also going to be starting back up some episodes on a podcast he had or maybe he's going to revamp it and do something new but I know he's got a lot of stuff he needs to talk about and needs to get off his chest as well y'all check him out I think his handle on Instagram if I'm not wrong is o underscore that underscore d underscore va I think I, I want to say that's what it is. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry, man. I'll put I'll put the right stuff in the uh, description when I finish with all this, though, right? I spoke to him about artificial intelligence, and that we can revisit that. I think me and him need to do a part two. So, yo, DBL for real, yo, we gotta we gotta knock that because yo, we know we had a discussion just the other day about man the advances and the things that are changing and and where we're headed. I mean, it's crazy. Then I also want to give a, a big shout out and a thank you to uh, my good friend, my also my brother, my roommate. Curtis, CMP, Mr. 4.0. I talked to him twice. First, I think we talked about uh, when God Rest the Dead, uh, when XXXTentacion, when he passed away, that same evening, I believe. Yeah, I think it was the same when the evening, when the news, I mean, pardon me, when it came out. We spoke about, you know, just that because he has a child, a son, you know what I'm saying? What's up, uh, London? Shouts out. I know you're probably going to watch this, man. Make sure you're doing good in school, man. Then I spoke to him again about him going to school and him going to get his certificate for HVAC and, um, you know, just all the stuff that he's been doing, you know. So that's why we call him Mr. 4.0, right? Because he had a 4.0 and then he's certified. So, yeah, if you watch that, you can go back and watch that on YouTube. And also it's on the other platforms as well. But yeah, I just wanted to thank all of them, man, because, you know, without them, I wouldn't have had the content, obviously, to put out what I did. And, you know, it was kind of good to have people around that you know to kind of help, you know, push the situation forward. So I wanted to say that. And also some of the other episodes, let's see, what else? I, t- I talked about Freddie Gibbs, his his uh, album. The, what was it? God dang it. No, nah, I can't even think. It was called Freddie. And I did a review on it. But anyways, yeah, so man, that, that thing was incredible. The album was, wow, incredible. We opened up a, a quick uh, idea of our predictions, I believe, on Power, which I can't wait to come back. Yo, anybody who watched Power, yo, you you know, like, it's serious, right? It's serious, super serious. But also, I mean, sidebar, Snowfall, bruh, shit is crazy. Show is out. It's fucking out. It's out. It's outstanding. It's outrageous. It's crazy. It's good, man. I, could, I couldn't get the word out. But yeah, also, what else did I talk about? Health, 
um, talked about mental health or and really health overall. Um, health is wealth, I think was the name of the episode, I believe. Do yourself a favor, right? Subscribe to the channel and anywhere where podcasts are available, man. Go on Spotify. You can go on SoundCloud. Follow me on Instagram and on Facebook. All of them are, if you look up Words Illa, you're probably going to find it. If not, put in The Words Illa Podcast, and I'm sure it'll lead you to the places you need to find me at. So anywhere you listen to podcasts, anywhere, you know, mainly most platforms I'm, I'm pretty much on. YouTube, it's The Words Illa Podcast. Let's keep it going. Uh, what else I got here? Um, well... I guess maybe this may not be a video version. My video just cut out on me. That's cool. Uh, regardless, what I've established for myself for this season, what it is is I've felt like the things that I had spoke on and the things that I wanted to happen and the things that I was really attracted to, so to speak, they're now coming true. You know, I'm I'm experiencing these things that are, you know, I felt like at a time were outside of me, something that I never felt like was actually going to take place, right? And I think it's because... I had such a, a, a low worth, you know what I'm saying? I had low, you know, self-esteem. I had a, so to speak, I guess you could call it that, right? It was more like I was unsure of a lot, you know? And so that fear caused me to, to create scenarios in my head and, and, and make up ideas that just weren't real. And, and it just wasn't a place that I wanted to be in. So really what I, what I did was as far as a lot of changes that I started making, the first thing was I needed to get an, an interlock system, which um, if anybody who doesn't know, when you get a DUI, even now in the state of Virginia, on your first one, you could get one. Um, mine came from the second one, but if your BAC is a certain level on your first one, you, you automatically have to get one. But definitely on your second one, you have to get one. And due to, I had got a second one back in 2012. And my BAC was at a point where they only required me to have it for six months. Well, at the time, I mean, I also had to serve weekends in jail and, you know, I had a car payment and I had insurance payment. I had rent to pay. I had, you know, a lot of things, my lawyer, uh, court fines, you know, all this stuff. So I couldn't afford it. I basically just gave my car to my sister. I just went without, you know, I just went ahead and, you know, toughed it out. And also because I just didn't have the belief in myself. Like I said, I think a lot of it came from a mindset I had. All that time it went by, right? Back in May, I quit drinking, right? Because I, at that time, I realized I was going to put myself on the road, so to speak. And I knew that, obviously, I had to get this interlock, ignition interlock in my car. So I um didn't have a choice, you know what I'm saying? Really, I did, but I just realized, you know what? I need to go forward with this. I need to go with this this feeling and this idea that I've got of, yo, let's get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's, let's, you're going to make it happen no matter what. So I, I quit drinking. I had quit cigarettes, like I said, a month before that. And then I got a membership at a gym nearby and like I just started making it a point, you know, and then I changed my diet too. So I stopped, you know, I stopped eating meat and then I would only cheat, so to speak, and have meat like on the weekends or something like that. And then I, I didn't, I stopped pretty much dairy, you know, but then I would flip flop. So certain days, you know, I wouldn't do too well. I'd have something I wasn't quote unquote supposed to have or whatever. But a, a big part of it was I stopped like thinking about the idea of like what it means and how I'm supposed to do this and like labeling things and how I felt like it should be or whatever. So I just kind of let go of those ideas and just like started working with myself and doing what I felt like would work for me. You know what I mean? And um, man, the results have been great, man. You know, it, it was incredible the things that um, I, I've had happened for me, you know, since then, you know, just my feeling, my, my energy, you know what I'm saying? And, and my outlook on things, you know, I started to believe cause I've seen somewhere the idea or the, the, I think it was a meme probably somewhere. Obviously we live in the meme era, right? It was something that explained, you know, when you start to do something different, that's outside of the norm, so to speak of what you're used to doing or what people normally see you doing, they kind of, for lack of a better term and really what it really is, they joke you. They have a lot of comments about what you're doing and they make it seem like, oh guy, well, you're not going to do that. Like we've seen this before. We've, you know, you're not that guy. You won't do it. You won't complete, but maybe not those exact words, but you can just kind of tell the way that people speak and how they, they approach things. They kind of like, man, you're not going to do anything. You're, or you're not going to go through this, but you know, now the results are there. I'm going to post a picture of the before and after from May of 2018 to this month, March of 2019. And you could see the drastic difference, you know what I'm saying? And then people who have spoke to me know like, you know, this is really how I am now. And it's not a game I'm trying to play or some kind of wool I'm trying to pull over people's eyes and, you know, use it as some kind of marketing tool or something like that. Like it's, it's nothing close to that. 
it doesn't resemble that to me. I mean, maybe it will for other people on the outside looking in, I guess, but for the real people who have been around and know, like, that's just what I've been doing. On top of all that, you know, I've had music I've been wanting to record, you know, for a long time, you know, I've had it. And so I finally felt the need to just say, you know what, I'm going for it. You know, I got to get in the studio, I got to get this stuff recorded. So I've been back in the studio with T Riffic. Shouts out to you, Riffic, man, the Blacklight Studios, man. Y'all make sure y'all hit him up, get a session, man. Serious inquiries only. <laughs> I've been, you know, really working and being around people. I've spoken to more people. I've been out in different, I went to a show and saw some people that I haven't seen in a while. And um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm feeling better about things overall, right? You know, I'm in this process of getting all these things together and I have this, you know, I had got a new car from my, from my aunt, you know, and I got this an interlock system put in my car and I was, you know, driving, I was good to go. Like I was just, man, you couldn't tell me nothing, you know what I'm saying? I had stopped drinking, I had stopped doing eating these certain things, I had go, started going to the gym more, you know, I had started like really believing, so to speak, in the things that I wanted to become what I was. If you look back and watch some of these episodes and the things that I said and how I felt back a, just a year ago, you know, it, those things are real now to me, you know, and 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 not just in to meaning it in a materialistic way, but like I've, those ep, those feelings or those lessons, if you will, or those, you know, ideals and those morals that I wanted to stand by are now a part of who I am, you know, and, and it's how I how I deal with things is how I go through life now. So I don't want to make this any somber, you know, and turn this into a sad story or whatever. But, um, you know, just just a week ago, you know, 10 days ago on March 11th, you know, on a Monday, nonetheless, at noon, you know, what I'm saying this is at noon, mind you, I'm just setting up a, a, a the premise, if you will, of what, what took place. So I was involved in an accident where I had come home for lunch. I was getting ready to go back. I was leaving out of my neighborhood. And where I live at, you know, when you come out of the neighborhood, you're coming out onto a main road that's 55, you know, so it's almost like the highway, basically. And the way it is, is it's two opposite directions of traffic. And there's a stoplight to the left of me that's like only about, you know, maybe 50 paces, 60 paces away from me. You know what I'm saying? So I pull out and get into the center of the two lanes, you know, that divide where the two lanes are like. And so I can get some positioning so I don't have to sit there and wait for that light and try to wait to see if I can even get out So the traffic clears on the side that I needed to I pull out and then I'm looking to my right on my side uh, My passenger side behind me and seeing if any vehicles are coming. I see it that there's an opening Okay, so it's cleared out and as soon as I turn around and I'm looking forward to try to coach the direction I need to go into there's a Chrysler 300 that's like right on top of me and I have but maybe four or five seconds, if that. I don't even think it was that long. I don't think it was like two seconds. Like really, as soon as I turned around, it was right there. So I grabbed the steering wheel like as tight as I can. And I had my seatbelt on and my, I just tensed up. And he hit me with such a strong impact. I mean, it turned my car 180. I'm facing the other direction of traffic. You know, I, like I could have gone down the other way, taken a right out of my neighborhood. I look out of the passenger side window and I look over to see where his car is and his car is like right in the this little embankment that's like right at the beginning of my street. As I look, you know, right at that same time, he's getting out of the vehicle and he's coming around. He's on the passenger side of the car now stumbling and he lifts up and I look and he's got a bottle of Jack Daniels in his hand. So it's like it was one of these things where it was like just ironic, you know, I'm, you know, a month away, so to speak, from finishing con six consecutive months with this in interlock system in my car and haven't had a drop of alcohol, no cigarettes, changed my life, doing a feeling like I'm in the best position I could be in. You know, I'm almost done with this, like I'm home free, so to speak, and then I don't have to keep worrying about this nonsense and whatnot. And so he just totaled my vehicle, you know what I mean? A drunk driver, like I said, runs through the red light and just smashes into my vehicle. Over the last week, I've been dealing with, you know, trying to, you know, my body hasn't been feeling right. You know, I know I probably need to go to the doctor and just get another checkup just to make sure everything's all right. But, you know, I didn't hit my head on anything. I didn't lose consciousness. I didn't, as far as I can tell, my body doesn't, definitely doesn't feel like I broke any bones. Like, I'm, I, I would know that. I'm pretty sure, especially within the collarbone area or shoulder or whatnot or chest. I'm sure I would have felt that in my sternum or whatever. I'd have, like, trouble breathing or something, but... I've been good most of the, you know, pretty much, you know, I had some soreness, you know, I'm still every once in a while feeling it a little, but, you know, that's just, I don't know, it's God, it's the universe, it's, it's you know, whatever term that you feel like you need to call it, you know, to make yourself good about whatever it is so you can, you know, rest at night, I guess, to, to go through that and to then, you know, have to deal with these people at the, the offices of these different people for the courts and whatnot and, you know, dealing with my insurance company, you know, and me being at the time being upset. And I know my attitude towards people was not good. You know what I'm saying? I was, 
I was obviously not happy. You know what I'm saying? I was not in a good space. And I felt like everywhere I turned, people just kept giving me the runaround, trying to find different ways to basically put the ball back in my court. But a lot of that was me just over, like overthinking stuff and like, you know, not seeing through other people's eyes and realizing, you know, that's that's the type of stuff that it's like if you want changes and you want to see good, you know, you have to first understand that you you have to recognize if you want that for yourself, you have to see it in other people. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't want to give this energy to people, but I did. And it was I felt like I had to because in some instances, I felt like on the flip side, if I hadn't have said things the way I did or didn't do things the way I did it, maybe I wouldn't have gotten it as taken care of as quickly as I have. You know what I'm saying? I have a new vehicle already, which I mean, it was my mother's who she didn't, you know, end up needing it you know for anything so I now I have it but regardless at the end of the day everything will be good you know bef- probably by next week you know so I mean I felt like in some ways there was a give and a take in there you know there was things I had to realize about myself and my actions and my words you know what I'm saying but also just realizing you know people are just doing their job you know what I'm saying and I don't know where they're coming from I don't know what they got going on I don't know where their head is at I don't know what they're dealing with you know what I'm saying I don't know their upbringing I've never been through them through any hardships they've never been through any hardships with me so if, uh, how can I expect to get some sort of empathy or whatever from people who I mean they're just doing their job now we could have a separate conversation at some point about the idea of you know well so what you're still a professional you're here right so own up to what you've decided to take on, whether or not that means you have the courage to go out and do the things you wanted to do, because whether it be your family, whether you have, again, people who are still in a place where they don't believe in themselves, they have a low self-worth, you know, even still, whatever position or whatever job you do, realize like the, the universe only wants the best for you. So it's going to move out of the way if you go towards the things you want the most. But in the moments where you're already in a position, whether or not you can actually get to that place like in a snap of a finger because, you know, you don't plant the seed and then harvest it right after. So you got to go through the growth period and the hardships and the ups and downs and the growing pains, if you will. So you got to realize like this is just the way it is. And, And you've got to deal with it and say, these emotions aren't mine, you know, so I can't sit here and be angry and just own that and be like, anger is me, and then run that through every situation and scenario afterwards, because whether you do or whether you don't, the universe is like, yep, you're right. It doesn't have an understanding of this difference between what you're saying you don't want, because all it's hearing is what you're thinking about. All it's, it's, it's noticing the, the patterns of what you've decided is how you want to live and what you want to feel. So it, it gives you that relentlessly, without fail, and it will always do that. Now that sounds like some kind of mystical type stuff, but it's just, I mean, if you look at, and if you talk to anybody who has had, you know, success in their lives, you know, has, has succeeded in own businesses or, you know, done, been able to survive, so to speak, or, or thrive, I should say, off of the things that they love, the things that make them tick, the things that make them feel good inside, they did it through a lot of hard work, a lot of hard work and dedication and belief, even in the times when it didn't seem too bright, even when it felt like it wasn't gonna work out. They set their intention, they set their their ideas up in their head, they made it a very clear vision, very detailed, down to the textures of it, the smell of it, as if it was right there in front of you, right there, or in, in the moments, when they were in those moments of anger or frustration or being upset or being in pain, they owned it, they felt it, you know? And so that became a tool they could use from that point forward. And it helped to, to reinvigorate them to say, this is a feeling that now has something to give you. What is there to get from this? How can I use this in some manner? That's the only way you get places that you want to be, you know, and not a lot of us have experienced those times. And it's only in hindsight that we then reflect and realize that that's what it was that happened. But then we still go back mindlessly to doing the same habits and then questioning it when we're back into a hardship again. But this is all something that you've decided. It's all something that you said you wanted. You know what I'm saying? So, man, I I, I, all this to, to say, really, you know, I've I've decided, you know what I'm saying? And that's where it starts, deciding, you know? And then it becomes a practice. The same way that somebody who prays every day, the same way as somebody who goes to the gym every day, the same way as you're drinking alcohol or smoking cigarettes or eating bad foods or, you know, having these unhealthy relationships or whatever, all of those are choices and practices. And and, And you've given it purpose. You've decided that this is what you want. So... Obviously, there's pain that's involved, but there's always pain, and there's and those things are right next to each other: hate and love, evil and fear. You know, what I'm saying? or love and fear. They're all closely connected, you know, and they're all the same 
thing, you know what I'm saying? Different sides to the same coin, I like to say, you know? So you can't just sit here and be happy only when there's happiness happening. You have to notice that if I decided intentionally and I choose more wisely, I'm more consciously, mindfully choosing the, the things that I want to see in my life, I get more of it. You know, it's just not that hard. Now, I, I would go into some other things that I could probably give you an example about, about, you know, me manifesting the money that came from this accident. And now and I have no true, so to speak, bodily injuries. I'm not severely injured. But, you know, I don't want to give away my personal information like that about what, how much money I got or whatever. But <laughs> let's just say I knew that this was going to happen. Um, and so I will be in the process very soon of getting a lot of things together that I needed. And opportunities are presenting themselves to me every day. I'm always getting be great opportunities. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm like, I can't, I feel like they're always there now. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I'm opening myself up to these things, but I, I have to show up. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times you can, you know, create something. So you, a lot of people have a lot more power than they believe. And they just don't ne recognize it in the moments where you've told yourself you wanted something. You had such a strong conviction about it. You kept saying it strong about it a lot. Every single day it showed up to you. And then you didn't know what to do with it. You know what I'm saying? I've had those moments and I'm, I'm still every once in a while having those because I'm still trying to break free from some of these ideas and these, limit, these limits I posed to myself. And I posted and I put onto myself that aren't real. You know, it's me. I've, I've decided these ideas. I've decided what's real to me and what's not. I, I just want to encourage anybody and everybody really like take hold of what you feel. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it might be. You know what I'm saying? And learn that these things that happen to you, there's something in it. You know, you need to learn how to pick up on those things. You need to learn how to take what's coming to you and, and know that there that's not all happy. It's not all rain, sunshine and rainbows. You know what I'm saying? It has to rain for there to be growth. You know what I'm saying? You got to go through the storm. You got to go through it to get to it, right? So again, you know, uh, this is just episode one of season two. This is the Words Illa podcast. I am, of course, Words Illa aka Drew Skills, aka Ill doing it too. If y'all want to follow me again, I've said it a couple of times throughout this episode. Um, on Instagram and on Facebook, it's Words Illa. Um, again, I'm on Spotify, Pocket Cast, Apple Podcasts. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm sure I'm gonna still use SoundCloud, so you can look it up on SoundCloud. Um, I'm gonna try to. What happened? My fucking video went out on me, man. Whatever, that's fine. I'm gonna get this shit together. So the first episode, this one is on me. I fucked up on that, but that's okay. Doesn't matter, cause this shit about to get better. So I got more stuff coming for y'all, man. Again, I want to thank every last person who clicks play, even listens for a five minute period, man. Just the fact that you decided and you had some kind of interest. Maybe I'll get you in the next one, or maybe at some point you'll find something that you would agree with or enjoy for me. But um, I've got new music I'm working on, man. So, hey, yo, shout out T-Rific, man. That beat, man, I'm telling you, this shit is crazy, man. What I got to it, man. Oh, man. I was going to do a snippet, but nah, I'm, I'm going to keep that on the tuck, man. But that shit is crazy, man. Um, Man, y'all going to, I love it, you know what I'm saying? But it's some really, you know, high-grade rap, if I, if I say so myself. Uh, But, yeah, man, again, thank y'all, man. And um, as a word to close out, I want to I wanna open it with a word of, a, of affirmation and appreciation. And I want to end it out with a word of encouragement. I think I kind of did that, but let me round it out just a little bit. Be the master of you, you know what I'm saying? Check my hashtags I use most of the time when I post things via uh, Instagram and Facebook. Those are usually the only social medias that I really use a lot. You, you're God. You know what I'm saying? This thing that, you, that you're experiencing, this thing that we call life, this thing that you're, you're, you're having uh, an experience as is being a human, you know, because you're not a human. You're, you're, you're a lot more than that. You know what I'm saying? You should understand that first and foremost. Own it. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're here because there's something bigger than you that all it wants to do is listen to you. All it wants is what you want. And you, have, you just have to want it. You have to really, really want it. Then you have to make it actionable. Take the steps to do it. That's what gods do. So let's get to it, man. I appreciate y'all, man. I'll holler at y'all later, man. Peace.